Live Aid in 1985 was a charity concert that was held simultaneously in the UK and America and was put together to help fight the famine in Ethiopia that had been documented the previous year. I don't think I've ever shared this with you guys, but I used to live in Ethiopia when I was younger. Live Aid 1985 was the site of several high-profile reunions including Black Sabbath, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, as well as the Beach Boys with Brian Wilson, but that wasn't what most fans were looking forward to. The charity concert was also the site of the most anticipated reunion, one involving three quarters of the members of Led Zeppelin. Their performance that day would be remembered as a complete disaster, even by the members themselves, and today we're going to explore the story of what happened. Led Zeppelin would break up in 1980 following the death of drummer John Bonham. The band would reunite for the first time in 1985 after Live Aid organizer Bob Geldof convinced the surviving members to appear at the Philadelphia concert at John F. Kennedy Stadium. The band would play through a 20 minute long set consisting of three of their classic songs including Rock and Roll, Whole Lot of Love, and Stairway to Heaven. Tony Thompson Phil Collins filled in on the drums for that performance because John Bonham was so difficult to replace they had to bring in two drummers. The performance though wasn't remembered for the right reasons. The reunion was marred by a myriad of problems. Bassist John Paul Jones flew in the day of the show and the band only spent an hour in rehearsals. Couple this with the fact that the monitors were acting up and the members couldn't hear themselves or each other and when Jimmy Page was handed a guitar as he walked on stage, he was out of tune. Couple this with frontman Robert Plant's vocal problems and it wasn't the performance fans had hoped for. Robert Plant would tell Rolling Stone three years after Live Aid, emotionally I was eating every word that I uttered and I was hoarse. I had done three gigs on the trot before I got to Live Aid. We had rehearsed in the afternoon and by the time I got on stage my voice was long gone. With Jimmy Page adding years later, my main memories really were of total panic. John Paul Jones arrived virtually the same day as the show and we had about an hour's rehearsal before we did it. And that sounds like a bit of a kamikaze stunt really when you think of how well everyone else was rehearsed. Phil Collins would write about the performance in his book stating, I knew the wheels were falling off early on in the set. I can't hear Robert clearly from where I sat, but I can hear enough to know that he's not on top of his game. If I had known it was to be a two drummer band, I would have removed myself from proceedings long before I got anywhere near Philadelphia. He would also tell Q Magazine in 2014 in a separate interview, I thought it was just going to be low key and we'd all get together and have a play, but something happened between that conversation and the day, it became a Led Zeppelin reunion, I turned up and I was a square peg in a round hole, adding, Robert was happy to see me but Jimmy wasn't, you could sense I wasn't welcome. If I could have walked off I would have, but then we'd be all talking about why Phil Collins walked off Live Aid so I just stuck it out he'd remember. Collins would also blame a lack of rehearsal time as reported by the New Musical Express stating, I didn't rehearse when I got there but I listened to Stairway to Heaven on the Concord. I arrived and went to the caravans and Robert said Jimmy is belligerent. Collins also pointed the finger at the other drummer Tony Thompson who he claimed was trying to make a name for himself should Led Zeppelin stay together and need someone for the drums. Collins claimed Thompson ignored his advice on how to perform that day. Jimmy Page put part of the blame on the performance on Phil Collins telling the Sunday Times the drummer couldn't get the beginning of rock and roll so we were in real trouble with that but at the end of the day he didn't know anything. We played a whole lot of love and he was there bashing away cluelessly and grinning. I thought that was really a joke he'd remember. The band was so unhappy with the reunion performance they wouldn't allow it to be used on the Live Aid DVD that was put out years later. And despite the poor performance, Robert Plant would organize some secret Zeppelin rehearsals six months later, but it wasn't meant to be. The surviving members would reunite a handful of times since then, appearing at the 40th anniversary of Atlantic Records at Madison Square Garden in 1988, Jason Bonham's wedding in 1990, and most recently at London's O2 Arena in 2007, and that show would be the only one of the reunions where they played a full set. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. We'll see you again in Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.